Uh, hi guys, uh, I'm in Israel, as I said, and uh, with me here is uh, Pavel. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> Hello. Uh, pa Pavel, um, first thing, your name, it sounds very Polish. Yeah, it's true. I was born in Minsk in Belarus. It is Slavic name. Yeah, I wanted to clarify it because uh, you know someone could say that I didn't go to Israel and <laughs> he's <laughs> definitely in Israel. He's definitely in Israel. definitely yeah. And uh, we are in the uh, Freak, Freak uh, shop. Game store. Yes, Freak Game Store. And uh, now I will ask uh, some questions to the Pavel about the roleplay game scene in the Israel. Because, you know, people playing roleplay games everywhere, in every corner of the world, also in the Israel. The first question is, what was your gateway game or in your country? The gateway game that started all of this. Definitely Dungeons and Dragons. Definitely Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, well, uh, D and D has been in Israel. D and D in the United States has been from 1974, and in Israel it is present from 1977, so more than 40 years. And it started being organized, like um, officially imported to Israel in 1987. Okay. In 1988, there were the first uh, products from D&D translated to Hebrew, so more than, almost 30 years ago. Uh, in the 90s, more games were translated, not a lot of them, mainly Shadowrun, Earth Dawn, uh, Battletech, um, okay. a miniature game. Uh, also, um, in the 2000s, uh, Exalted. Exalted, Exalted yeah. was translated to Hebrew also, and uh, we we had some also original role-playing games like uh, Heads as Man in recent years, and uh, now from the current games Pathfinder is translated to Hebrew, also D and D up until fourth edition included. Probably the most popular game now is D and D fifth edition and a Pathfinder, like in the United States, but also you can find exotic, re little like uh, published games from like small press games from okay. the United States, from other countries. You should understand something very important about the Israeli role-playing community. In the Israeli role-playing community, out of 12, about 12,000 players, uh, most of them are kids, going to special after-school D&D classes or Pathfinder classes. There are companies uh, that work and play with D&D tickets for money. Okay. It's like an after-school activity. Oh, I see. And like about, I think, like half or two, uh, like three-fourths of Israeli players are kids playing D&D or other stuff. Uh, among adults, It's very, very varied. People play lots of stuff. D&D is popular. White Wolf game is popular. Also, very like small-time American publishers, independent games, indie games. They are very like aware of what is cool. Uh, Blades in the Dark are played. Um, what else? Eclipse Phase. On Israeli oh, yes. convention, you can find lots of different games, a lot of variety, but. Not a lot, not a big player community. Maybe 3,000 grown-up players and okay. about 10,000 kids playing D&D and Pathfinder. You've mentioned uh, Shadowrun. Can you tell something more? Yes, of course. Shadowrun, the second edition, was translated to Hebrew. Uh, was translated to Hebrew in about 1995. Uh, an adventure for Shadowrun was also translated to Hebrew in 1995. 
Okay. And those are the, from what I know, the only two products that were. The, it was popular back then, and now it's not very popular. Okay, next question. Uh, how many games, books, uh, yearly appear on the uh, Israel market? Not a lot of them. Maybe one or two books a year, not a lot of them. There aren't a lot of uh, roleplays here in Israel, and all of them, almost all of them, other than kids, like all the grown-ups, yeah. they read English, so they just order from Amazon oh, or some, and they, they play in Hebrew, oh. but they read the book in English. So not a lot of books are, uh, are, are printed here, are published here. Maybe one or two books a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about uh, um, origin, orig origin, original Hebrew role-playing games? Yes. Yes. So original Hebrew role-playing games, you can count them on one hand. Um, uh, so uh, there were original adventures for D and D uh, in the late 80s and 90s in Israel. Uh, there, then there were uh, in the 2000s original uh, role-playing games like Arrow of Time. Arrow of Time is the first whole uh, original Hebrew language role-playing game. It's a fantasy setting with time travel. Uh, it didn't really catch up in Israel. There are some people playing it, but it wasn't immensely popular. And there were also other games. One of them is Halom, um, Project Aspamia. Project Aspamia, it's like the Hebrew-Israeli Delta Green, something like Delta Green. Yeah, so it's like a conspiracy game, a little general game. Uh, we have also uh, games that were... Um, uh, we have a game made on Dungeon World engine, uh, a Hebrew setting uh, based on Dungeon World. It's pretty new. It was uh, crowdfunded here in Israel. I actually supported it. It uh, came to Becker several months ago. We also had a um, uh, original uh, a monster manual based on the zodiac sign. It's an uh, original Israeli film. Uh, not a lot of them. Original, like uh, we had an, one not very popular universal system called. Aleph Aleph, it's like a system for creating other universal systems. It's a little bit weird, it didn't catch up. So we have probably five or seven original Israeli games and uh, a little bit of original source books and adventures uh, made for D&D. It's a setting, uh, original Israeli Hebrew setting for Dungeons and Dragons. I think it's for fourth edition, maybe fifth, I'm, I'm not sure. So we have this, and they have a whole, a whole line of, of games. They are compatible usually with Pathfinder and D&D 4 or 4 for 5th edition. And uh, those are original Israeli stuff for D&D uh, and Pathfinder. But we don't have a lot of original games. Uh, you mentioned convention. Uh, how many conventions you have in Israel? So, and so we have to uh, I finish the question. Okay. <laughs> how many and how big are there? And are there any role game events there? Yes. So Israel has two early um, role-playing conventions, big role-playing conventions. One in the spring, it's the biggest one, called Bigor. Bigor is a big Israeli gathering of role players. It takes place in Ramat Gan, near Tel Aviv, usually, but it, the, the place changes. Uh, several hundred people show up and play uh, different games, a little bit of LARPs, but mostly role-playing games, uh, tabletop role-playing games, and it varies, it has a huge selection of games. Uh, in the dozens, like several dozen games, they publish the game on the website and people sign in, and go and play this game for three or four hours. Uh, different things, different stuff. So in the this is in the spring, in about April, on the Passover vacation here in Israel. Mm -hmm. So on the Sukkot vacation, in the autumn, in the fall, about end of September, beginning of October, 
It has icon. Icon is the biggest science fiction convention in Israel. It takes place here in Tel Aviv. And they also have role-playing games there. Also several dozen role-playing games. But Icon is a huge convention by Israeli terms. About 25,000, maybe 30,000 people come to Icon, maybe to enjoy uh, science fiction, but also role-playing games. Several dozen role-playing games are played and the selection is big. Uh, from the newest stuff printed to small time to adventures taking place here in Israel. And they have varied games, fantasy setting. Even um, from what I remember, I, I even participated in a Witcher game, Vidzmak. Vidzmak, a Russian language game here in Israel, about the books of Andrzej Sapkowski. He actually came to Icon, and he came another time. I met him twice here in Israel. Next question: How many girls play the uh, play role playing, role playing game? So in Israel, there is a growing number of role players, of female role players. Um, I suppose about a quarter to a third of all players are female, but it's hard to tell. Uh, they are very active in Israel. They're actually, it's called the Amuta Lekidum Miskaket Afkidim. It's the Israeli organization for promotion, a non-profit for the promotion of role-playing games. It organizes big ones, so it has lots of girls there. Um, it's a growing community. We still don't have in Larpin, I must say, lots of girls in Larpin. There are about 40% girls. Lots of them. Yeah. Uh, I have a question from Mikoy Zaychik. Uh, does Orthodox Jewish Jews also play role-play games? Yes, of course. Um, religious Jews, religious Israeli Jews, play role-playing games. Um, not, I'm not talking about like ultra-Orthodox, very Haredi, very religious. I don't know if they're playing, not sure about it, don't think so. But moderately religious people, what we call uh, Kipasruga, uh, national religious people, it's uh, religious people here in Israel, okay. they play and now they even have a convention in the settlements, in the Judea and Samaria, in the West Bank, in the a religious settlement. They have a role playing game convention. It's gonna wow. go now, and board games also very popular among them. And yeah, religious people play. Not the extremely religious, but the moderately religious people play role playing games. Yes. Do they play in Shabbat? Shabbat. Good question. I. I'm not sure. I think a role playing game is allowed in Shabbat. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not very religious myself, but if I'm not mistaken, role-playing game and board game are uh, allowed on Shabbat. Should ask someone more not knowledgeable, but if I'm not mistaken, role-playing games are allowed on Shabbat. Okay. Uh, you mentioned a couple of games. But I'm not sure uh, that you said anything about World of Darkness. World of Darkness. World of Darkness was huge one time in Israel in the 90s, like the whole in the whole world, and the beginning of the 2000s. There are people still playing World of Darkness here in Israel. World of Darkness games like Vampire are popular. Vampire: The Masquerade. Uh, Werewolf is popular. There was a line of LARPs uh, called Moon is a Harsh Mistress. Moon is a Harsh Mistress, like the book by Heinlein. It was a line of LARP games on war on based on Werewolf. They were held each month in Tel Aviv in park in the Higher Con Park. Uh, Werewolf LARP. Uh, uh, it's still pretty popular. There are people playing Mage the Ascension, Vampire the Masquerade, and the newer editions of uh, World of Darkness. It's moderately popular now because in the whole world it's uh, it's been like a recession in the World of Darkness. Okay. Uh, another question is from Pavel. 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 <laughs> uh, Pavel Ma. Is there an example of Israel game uh, using Kabbalah 
using Kabbalah. So there aren't like proper games that the whole game is based on Kabbalah. I'm not aware of it, but almost each convention, even I ran a game based on Kabbalah, urban fantasy game, urban horror fantasy game on Israeli convention. And there were really interesting concepts based on Jewish mysticism and Kabbalah in Israeli convention using settings and systems like Delta Green, using systems like Call of Cthulhu, uh, with aspects of Jewish mystery, um, things mainly like urban fantasy involving the golem, involving Jewish magic. Uh, I've run a game that people cast spells against pygmies, pygmies that were uh, going after um, uh, foreign workers from Africa. They were like hunted by African sorcerers. And they, uh, and they were like Kabbalic wizards that came and, and helped them to escape and kill the pygmies. Uh, it was fun. There, there were uh, lots, like, I don't know if lots, but there were games based on Jewish mysticism and Kabbalah with elements of it, but not like a whole system based on Kabbalah. Yeah, Israeli role-playing games, they like lectures, they like to learn, but they mostly like to play. And they can play for long sessions, long campaigns. I've known a group playing more than 20 years in Ars Magica. We're playing in Ars Magica here in Tel Aviv for more than 20 years, a campaign. And Israelis love to play. Uh, we have a gathering once a week here in, in Tel Aviv in a place called Havana Club. It's a salsa club on the week. And once a week on Sunday evening, it has like a huge board game evening that also has role-playing games, D&D and Pathfinder, I think. And the uh, Israeli love to play. If you come to Israel and you know English, you can find the game and play. And they will be glad to, to play with you. Israeli are very welcoming and they will, will be glad to play with you and ask questions about the games in Poland and anywhere in the world. In Poland there are some questions and if you ask these questions online you will rise the discussion that will very soon will turn into blazing fire of flame and and emotions. Do you have the same? Yeah, we, we, we have we have the same. We have lots of discussions here about questions there there are like questions related to role playing like the styles of play what is correct what is good what is not uh, but also stuff like um, like the me too movement the role of women in games the role of like uh, subjects like we have i think even a discussion on this forum there was like in israeli facebook role playing group uh, I told you a few minutes ago about this uh, convention happening in one of the settlements yeah. on the West Bank. So it's a political question in Israel. Some of the people don't believe that um, West Bank settlements should be. They think they should be evacuated and we should give the territories to Palestinians. And there is a question there. People were asking, you sure it's, it's an Israeli European convention? It's outside of Israel. So it's a political question, dividing the left and the right. People in Israel are very tolerant. They would role play with anyone from every country, Arabs, Jews, every, everyone will play. But uh, there are subjects uh, of, that people don't agree on them. Yes. And they, they argue about them. <laughs> Political questions, stuff like uh, maybe feminist questions, uh, questions related to gay people, to to stuff like that. Okay, uh, you've mentioned uh, uh, politics. Politics. Yes, in role playing games. Uh, do you have any aspect of religion? Because uh, Israel is unique. Um, you have unique uh, culture. culture. I th actually, it's uh, three cultures at the same time, 
three religious based cultures at the same time in one country how that affects if any how uh, affects role playing games well it's it's an interesting question um, actually people don't bring like uh, religion and uh, like discussions uh, about like, there are there can be theological discussions on role playing games but they don't bring like uh, the arguments into role playing itself and um, i can say that most of israeli role players are jewish uh, there are people christian role players there are people uh, i don't know actually but i suppose there are i don't know them but i suppose there are uh, arab people playing role playing games here in israel i don't know them but there probably are people playing role playing games here in israel but uh, Uh, the every day to day religion questions are very very important here in Israel the the connection between the state and religion uh, it's very hot topic here in Israel it's sometimes being discussed in role playing games most time isn't uh, you should remember that at the end role playing game is a way of escaping reality there are games who deal with the israeli reality the reality of terror the reality of terror acts the reality of religious hatred and struggle but uh, most of the games aren't dealing with it directly and they set in other realities people want to escape they have these subjects all day every day on the news they don't want to bring religious hatred stuff like this uh, to to their hobby to their game they just want to play and have fun and escape to um, another world there are games that deal with those subjects here and deal with them very seriously also larps they deal with those kind of things like larps in the nordic tradition very uh, real like larps there are things like this in convention and other stuff but most israeli role playing games here are dealing with other stuff not every day to day news because religious extremism is present in the middle east and we don't want to bring so lots of reality to our hobby did you ever had warhammer fantasy yeah uh, role playing game warhammer fantasy role playing game is present in israel Uh, there is a community here in Israel, a distinct community of miniature games players, yes. wargaming. There is a community here, they are present on convention. It's not a huge community, but they are present. Uh, you can buy Warhammer stuff, it's expensive here. But mainly for wargaming, less role-playing. But there are people, I know of people playing Warhammer and also Warhammer 40k here in Israel also the role playing games and the war games like the miniature games i have one more question actually um, about the role playing game style from your perspective um, was there any change during these years how israel people play role playing games yeah few change Well, the, the community of role players in Israel actually matured during those years. In the 90s, when I began to play in 94, I was a kid, I was 10 years old. It was all about D&D, Dungeons and Dragons, slaying goblins, slaying monsters, uh, munchkin stuff. And most of the players were like that. There were uh, more adult players uh, engaging in more intellectual games. And when I grew up, Uh, I discovered this community, the mature gaming community, the adult gaming community, and people there were discussing really like high stuff. People like how, how this is, is this game called? Is this game about like ideas, gods? How is it called? Uh, Nobilis. 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 I don't know. Nobilis. So there's this. The, it was popular here in Israel. Nobilis. Uh, it was like games about ideas. And philosophical stuff and the community matured in those years a lot uh, the turning point was the internet the internet appeared here massively in the end of the 90s beginning of the 2000s 
the, and then people could read about games anywhere in the world. They could write about games. There were gaming magazines writing about role-playing games in the 90s. But with the internet, it exploded. People became aware of games all over the world, of the latest uh, fashions, the latest ideas. They were traveling. Israeli players now travel. I was, I were to, I, I traveled to GenCon in the United States. People in Israel traveled to Spiel in Germany. They traveled to England. They even traveled to New Zealand to LARP convention. So. Israeli LARPers were in the Philippines, run games there. Israeli LARPers were in New Zealand, like I told you. In Europe, in Canada, they run games. People became aware of the global trends of games. And games matured with the community. The community matured. The community is more sophisticated now. It's not about D&D, killing goblins, gaining XP gain. There are games like this, and with now with the OSR, with the old school renaissance, old school revival, it's popular here. They have lots of games like this, and of course there are kids playing Pathfinder, kids playing any fantasy game. They, they, there is such a thing. But the community, the adult community is more mature. They are playing more sophisticated games, they are ordering games online, and they, they engage in more mature stuff, more interesting stuff, and not only like killing goblins and going like, like the usual D&D stuff. So the community matured. It went a lot away since the 70s and the 80s, and it's now an interesting community. It's a small one, but it's really interesting one. Interesting one. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pavel. That was my last question. It has been a week since I came back from the Israel and uh, since that time I have some uh, I had some thoughts and I would like to share these thought, uh, thoughts with you. At the beginning I uh, before the travel I had uh, some expectation. I wanted to meet new people, new uh, role play games new role-play game style, totally different um, RPG scene in the Israel. I, uh, that was my expectation, but um, I realized when I was there that the role-play gamers are quite similar to us. They play the same games, mostly. They uh, they even have uh, similar problems and discussions and I thought that um, there, is n there isn't much different between all of us roleplay gamers all, all over the world but after the week, after I listened to the Pavel um, I, I realized, uh, I, I, I've noticed the slight differences slight differences between um, these two different cultures, role-play game cultures. And uh, I, now I know that if I could spend more time, meet more people, play more games, I will get to the deeper level of understanding the role-play game in Israel. And I didn't. I merely scratched the surface of um, role-players of understanding role players but this difference was enough for me to say that I've learned something but I didn't learn something about Israel and role playing games in Israel I've learned something about myself about how I play what kind of games I play and about Polish role players and and Polish style of gaming that was for me a big surprise that I travel across the world I talk to other people meet other cultures not to know the cultures because I think it's impossible to to know them uh, you only can taste them but in that process you can learn something about your culture and about yourself. And for me, it's, it's, uh, it's, it was a 
great adventure and it is great adventure it 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 will be great adventure because i want to do it more and more i want to travel to different countries to, to different role play gamers meet them play with them uh, read their role playing games and talk about role playing games not only because to know them not only because it is they are interesting and their games are interesting but also because um, thanks to that I can know uh, I can thanks to that I can learn something about myself and uh, about role playing games in Poland at the end of this video I want to thank to Pavel Pavel you are a great guy this um, this trip was possible this interview was possible thanks to you you show me the Tel Aviv thanks to you uh, I know the roleplay gamers a little bit roleplay gamers in uh, in Israel you are a very nice guy and thank you for your hospitality and your engagement in this project so thank you very much I'm hoping to see you in Poland uh, soon it will be a pleasure for me to welcome you here